telling you. So, uh, due to the viral troubles, we have started kind of uh, recorded these classes with you know empty rooms um, and you know. So no, obviously we miss the students, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a less <coughs> natural environment. But you know, nothing, no disease, no virus should have stop us to, uh, to to go ahead and learn the things actually. So, so let's continue what we were doing. Um, let me quickly recall what we did and uh, some of the high points of the course that we covered so far in our classes. Uh, <clears throat> so we started with limits okay, and then we interpreted limits and you know proved theorems about it, did computations about limits and we covered uh, everything about limits. And the next thing that we did is that we kind of defined the derivatives as the limit. So, I mean, if you remember, you know what we said actually is that if you have, you know, uh, a nonlinear graph, then how you can understand the mood or the trend of the graph, for example, say at a specific point, actually. Okay. In order to know the mood or um, uh, the trend of the graph at a specific point what we just said that if you look at the graph locally on a small scale in other words on small set of inputs then this guy which is the small you know set of outputs based on the small set of inputs is is or can be approximated by a straight line actually okay and if you see that we did through Dasmos actually that if you take a curve and take a point on the curve and draw a tangent line on it that then on infinitesimal level on a small level if you zoom it out this picture that the line or uh, uh, the tangent is going to tangent line is going to approximate the curve actually. So this is what that we did and if you want to know that at a single point whether the curve is going up or in other words it's increasing or decreasing so what you can do you can look at the slope of the tangent line actually and you can say that okay if the slope is positive then <coughs> uh, the curve is in mood of increment and if the you know slope is negative then the curve wants to go down actually okay so that's a that's a beautiful point that we kind of discussed and stressed actually. So what we did, what we were what we were doing uh, last time, um, we did um, you know what do you call um, this uh, chain rule and and how to do the differentiation through the chain rules. Basically, we were doing the differentiation rules. So we did different uh, rules to do the chain rules. So the pivotal <coughs> A rule that allows us to compute the complicated kind of uh, derivatives is really the chain rule actually. So how does chain rule work? They call that if I have a function say g of x or g evaluated at x and this function is swallowed by a function f and you want to compute the change in this function f of g of x when x is changing then this change can be computed by taking what you know take computing the derivative of f prime okay the derivative of f and evaluate this f this derivative at g of x and multiply this by f prime of x actually so this was the rule that we proved in our uh, classes and we discussed that how this rule emerges and you know what the motivation behind it so I'm not gonna get into the, all those details just want to give you a quick review of it actually okay and as a corollary to 
you know what do you call to this result we said that this result is really the ultimate powerful result no matter what kind of you know complicated function you take you can always you know kind of think of it as as composition of two functions actually okay so if you want to differentiate the composition of two function that's how you do it so as a as a result what we did for example we said that okay you know if i have for example a function f of x raised to n okay Sir, then uh -huh. should it be f prime of gx times f prime of x or ah, g so prime it should be g prime of x yes you're right it should be g prime of x thanks 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 for doing it actually okay so g prime of x <coughs> okay so if you have f of x raised to n then this this function can be seen as the composition of two functions actually so i can say that this is the composition of um, you know take a function g of x and take a function say f of x and then you know evaluate this g on the f of x would give you this expression actually so it can be it can be seen as that x power n composed with f of x actually so following this rule so what we can do so take this g r if you wish i can put a g here okay and i can call this f okay and uh, then this can be seen as what okay we have right. then this can be this can be treated as the composition of um, f evaluated at g of x actually okay and by the chain rule if you want to differentiate this then differentiate your function so it's going to be n raised to x power n minus 1 and then evaluate that derivative g of x actually in other words instead of uh, x you put say g of x raised to n minus 1 times the g prime of x actually okay so when we are basically doing this you have to i don't want to memorize this formula for you i have said this repeatedly I want that make sense of this formula in the light of the chain rule actually and this is important okay so if you want to compute the derivative of the g of x raised to n then differentiate the outer function and evaluate it at g of x so the outer function the, the function to with which g of x is composed is x power n so you differentiate it and then substitute g of x Onto, into that function in, instead of what you call x actually all right so instead of a um, imagine instead of a uh, if i have say e raised to f of x and you want to compute the derivative of this then this can be uh, e to the g of x then this can be seen as the composition of exponential function with the g of x actually and how, what would be the derivative of it? The derivative of it is going to be that, okay, differentiate the exponential function, which is going to be e to the x, and replace x by g of x multiplied by g prime of x, actually. And then you can have all such elementary functions, you know, you know, so if you have sine f of x, so it's going to be the derivative of sine is cosine and then evaluate this at g of x and um, g of x and multiply it with the g prime of x actually okay so what i want so usually when we when we learn and you know look at these things we usually memorize these actually but i don't want you to memorize the formula but what, what the uh, what i want is the Okay, you can keep it in your memory, but I want, you should know what is, you know, the key thing that is working behind, you know, such kind of relationships. And, you know, if you have, for example, log of, say, um, f of x, this can be seen as the logarithmic function composed with, with say, g of x. So it's going to be derivative the log of x, which is 1 over x, and then evaluate replace the x by g of x so you're going to get 
1 over g of x times g prime of x actually. Okay, so the derivative of the log and multiply with the derivative of what is inside it actually. So we did. And similar things can be true for all other elementary functions. Then, and, and, and what is the corollary of doing this is that now I can maybe give you, for example, a complicated function and I, I say that, imagine I have, uh, um, um, say, a sine of, say, log x, okay, then I can really differentiate it because I can see this as the composition of sine with the log function. And if I want to differentiate this, so I can, you know, really use this technique, the chain rule, and I can say that this would be that, okay, differentiate sine, which would be the cosine, and evaluate it at the function, say, log x, and multiply everything by, say, 1 bar x, actually. Okay. Um, so, so no matter how complicated function you have, for example, if you have a tangent of, say, you know, e to the x square plus 1, you just have to spot actually that, you know, if you compare it with, for example, the composition of a function, then, you know, how this works. So, so I can treat this expression as the composition of the tangent function with e to the x square plus 1. Okay? And interestingly, what you can note is that this e to the x square plus 1 can also be treated as the composition of e with the x square plus fun, uh, the exponential function actually. So, so if I want to differentiate this, so what would be the derivative of it? So the derivative of tangent, I hope you all remember. So it's going to be secant square um, and evaluate it at the function that is inside it times the derivative of e to the x square plus 1 actually. So we applied the chain rule once, okay, and now I want to differentiate this. So since this function can be treated as the exponential function uh, composed with x square plus 1, so, so you can, you know, you can again apply the chain rule x square plus 1 times um, uh, e to the x square plus 1, so the derivative of e is e, uh, e to the x is e to the x, and then replace x by the function, e to the g of x, times the derivative of what you call the function that you are composing with e are the power actually, so 2x plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to so 2x actually, okay, so only 2x. Hi, so there was, there, was, there was the all the stuff that we discussed in our uh, previous classes actually. There was, there was more that we can do. Um, um, let me recall some more stuff that we discussed in our class. But this was the basic elementary uh, stuff that we discussed in our class. As I said, um, I want to emphasize on this fact that do not memorize, so usually so you memorize these formula as that e to the g of x, okay, so you derivate e or okay, you know, then multiply, you know, so the e ka derivative is e, and then mul multiply it with the derivative of power. You know, okay, you can, in this way you can keep the, the formula in your head, but you will never know that, okay, what is the reasoning behind, you know, uh, such computation. So all of this stuff is a corollary to what you call the basic stuff, that is, um, uh, the composition of two functions. Okay, so what was the more that we did? So before moving ahead, I want to just quickly uh, give a review. All right. So the, what what we did more was this that okay. So an extreme situation of this is going to be so instead of uh, say uh, all these functions, we have some constant raised to say some function g to the x actually okay some constant raised to some function what do you call g to the x then how to differentiate and let's say say this constant is an arbitrary constant okay and you want to differentiate this and for this we developed 
formula, I mean, if you remember, you, you equate it with the y and then take log and you know do the usual steps. So we, we proved actually that this would be same as log of a, okay, multiplied by what do you call uh, g prime of x, right? And uh, log a to some uh, g of x. Log a to some, yeah. or we can recall actually. Yeah. So if you have this actually, so what you can do is that you take the log on both sides is going to be so g of x times a, and then times log of uh, times obviously log of uh, log of a, okay, and then you know do your differentiation. But this would be what you call the implicit differentiation actually. So we, we, we also discussed that. So this is going to be 1 over y times dy by dx. I mean, if you remember, I also emphasized too much on this that this is also an what you call manifestation of chain rule actually. So this is chain rule. Okay, so why this is happening? This is happening because of chain rule. So this is, this is like log of the function of x. And how you compute the log of a function of x is that, okay, you do the 1 over function times derivative of the function actually. So, so 1 over function y times the derivative of the function y actually. Okay, where y is the function of x. So, you're going to get log a g of x and then if you want, for example, this dy by dx, then this is going to be log a. Sir? G of x. Would not that be log a g prime of x? Hmm? As uh, we yes. are differentiating okay. so on both sides. Be g prime of x as well. Yes. Thank you. So it's going to be log a g prime of x and uh, multiply times y. y. Okay, and if you, if you remember y was a to the g of x, so if you wish you can put an a to the g of x actually. Okay. So this is really is the derivative of. Uh, such kind of function. So in other words, if I give you that, how are you going to differentiate, say, a function 2 to the sin x, okay, so you don't have to worry. So what you can do is that you can simply uh, say that the derivative of this function is going to be log 2, the derivative of sin x, which is cos x, times the same function which is 2 to the sine x actually. Okay? So I'm really rushing on these contents because we covered this in class actually. Okay? So I'll just quickly recall it. Another interesting thing that you can do on the same lines was um, really that instead of having say for example a constant you have say a function f of x raised to the g of x okay so you have a one function of x raised to another function of x and you want to uh, compute the derivative of it and the trick would would be what the trick would be really the same actually uh, that you take say log on both sides so this side is going to become log of f of x gx, so that, but I can write this as g of x times log of f of x, okay? Um, and then differentiate both sides, so you're going to get with respect to x, so this will by chain rule become 1 over y and dy by dx, and this will become what? g prime of x, so here you have to apply product rule, okay? So g of prime of x and log f of x plus g of x and what would be the derivative of the log f of x we just saw you can apply chain rule here again so it's going to be 1 over f of x okay times the f prime of x actually so this would be the end result and if you want only dy by dx you need to isolate dy by dx I need to do g prime of x log of f of x plus g of x by f of x and f prime of x and everything multiplied by y actually. And the y is really what you call f of x is to g of 
Okay. So this is really the generic recipe. I will I would I would not say to memorize this formula for you know f of x is to g of x, but I would say <coughs> better get the other. Continue. Okay. So so I would I would I would, I would not say that uh, memorize this formula uh, as it is, but I would say that keep this as an algorithm actually. That if you have a function and you want to di well, differentiate, for example, if you have a situation where, a f where the base is a function of x and power is also a function of x and you want to differentiate it, then this is the algorithm that you can follow. So I'm not saying that memorize this formula, I'm saying that you can always follow this step. For example, I will give you a simple example in that imagine you want to do say, uh, say y that is equal to say uh, sin x raised to, I don't know, maybe some tangent x actually, something like that. Okay? And you want to differentiate this function. So the recipe to do this when you have a situation constant power sum x. In other words, if you have, you know, the power as 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 some function of x, then this recipe would always work actually. So the, if the power of something is constant, you, know, you can you can do it differently. But if the power of anything, whether it's a constant, whether it's a function, is a function of x itself then this recipe would be very useful actually. Okay? So I have a power of something that is really a function of x. So if you want to differentiate it, apply this algorithm. Okay? And you're going to get what? Log. So take the log on the both sides. So once you take the log on both sides, so this guy will become tangent x log sin x log y and um, if you now differentiate both sides with respect to x then this will become 1 over y dy by dx again how by chain rule or implicit differentiation and you need to apply so you want to differentiate the product of the two functions actually so you need to apply the product rule okay so the secant square x times um, um, no, log sin x, okay. So I would say so I want to keep an eye on my calculations. <laughs> so tangent x and log sin x is going to be 1 over sin x times the derivative of sin x is really cos x. Okay. So the tangent is sin x over cos x and this is cos x over sin x. So I think, you know, both will be cancelled and you can get secant square x times log sin x plus 1 and everything so if you multiply y on the other side so everything is multiplied by uh, sin x raised to tangent x okay so these are the few q things uh, key few things that we really uh, studied in our last uh, discussions. So what was the more last thing? So if I give you, really if I say you that okay, what are the key things that you should keep in your head about a uh, differentiation, uh, especially is, is to keep these few things that okay, how to differentiate, say, a composition of two functions, okay? In particular, how to differentiate the functions of this form, where you have some elementary function and evaluate it at some function, okay? How to differentiate such functions, should keep the recipes, we discussed it. Um, and how to differentiate this kind of a function, where um, maybe you have some constant power function of x or maybe some function power 
another function actually. So if you keep these basic, uh, and when I'm saying this, I'm, I also mean, you know, these are some elementary things. I mean, I also mean obviously, you know, how to differentiate f of x raised to n or the tangent f of x and so on and so, so forth. So I just wrote few elementary functions actually, okay. But I really mean that, okay, you have a situation where a specific simple function is composed with another function and you have to do the differentiation then we just discuss the rules of it actually so just follow those rules and when you are doing a differentiation problem you just really need to in, in, in my experience you just really need to compare with one of really these forms and you will see that every single kind of differentiation you know almost is going to you know be one of such forms actually Okay, one of such forms. It's not going to be something. So no matter how complicated expression you have. What was the next thing that we did is really was really the implicit differentiation. Okay, implicit differentiation. Okay. And what do you mean by implicit differentiation? By implicit differentiation, I mean that you have some expression, okay, say f, that depends on x and y both in such a way that you can't kind of separate them actually. So if you have, for example, a function say y equal to f of x, then you know this is really what you call an explicit function actually why because the dependent variable is on one side and you know the dependent variable is explicitly written in the terms of independent variable actually all of these are really if you see carefully are explicit forms you know you know to which you can do the differentiation actually okay but what is implicit differentiation impl by uh, the, uh, implicit function by implicit function or implicit relation and you mean something where you can't just replace uh, write y in the terms of what do you call x actually equal to zero for example if you have say x square plus xy plus y square equal to zero Okay, so you have a relationship which kind of satisfies this kind of a, uh, an expression actually. Now, where it has been known that y is a function of x actually, some function of x. Okay, and your task is really to find what you call dy by dx. Okay, <coughs> then. We discussed in detail in the class that how to do the differentiation of such kind of expressions. Actually. So the way we did was that okay, you differentiate say x square. So so you differentiate. So take your expression and differentiate on both sides with respect to, for example, x. So if you're going to differentiate such kind of an implicit expression with respect to um, x, in other words, you don't have to try. I mean, if you can write, you know say y in the terms of x it's good you know that just try to write the y in the terms of x and then apply one of these rules but if you are not able for example here you will not be able why because you know how are you going to do it you can't just put all y's on one side and x on the other side actually okay so how to deal with such kind of situation or how to deal with differentiation of such kind of expressions is that you take the given you know implicit function where x and y are not able you know, you're not able to separate them and just directly differentiate and when you're differentiating it you know uh, then you have to apply you have to just keep this in view that y is some function of x which you don't know okay then you have to differentiate so when you differentiate it what you're gonna get you're gonna get say the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x or maybe the derivative of x squared derivative is a linear quantity plus derivative with respect to dx of xy plus derivative with respect to dx of y squared equal to z 
Okay. And and um, what would be the derivative of x squared? So the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x plus. Now this is a situation where x is multiplied by some function of x actually, and you don't know that function. So how are you going to do it? So you need to apply.